Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a lovely week and is looking forward to a great weekend. In this class everyone we are looking at IELTS speaking part three. We're looking at what you need for that band nine ability. While we wait for some of your fellow students, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. For the general IELTS, visit us at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of those uh, websites, we have lots of information for your speaking, reading, writing, listening. Let me show you these real quick while we wait for some of you to join up. Uh, this is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. You can click this big red button to join the premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access, so it's well worth it. Welcome, Jasur. Hi, Chirag. Welcome, Singing. Good to see many students. Welcome, Janil and Rashika. Nice to have our members in the class. Hello, Nick Haim. On our general IELTS website, looks like this with the green background at gieltshelp.com. Again, click that big red button. We are an official British Council IELTS Center um, and uh, certified agents. So you're in great hands with us. Students, on Sunday, we've got episode 3 HD, My IELTS Band 9 Journey coming. Uh, that's following episode one and two, which were registration and preparation. Episode three is test day. You get to see me take the actual official IELTS exam. So exciting. Um, you can also get our apps, Academic IELTS Help, links to ahelp.com, General IELTS Help, links to gieltshelp.com. By the way, if you can't wait for Sunday, you can actually watch episode three on our websites. That's where they're always posted first. So check that out. Um, Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help, G IELTS help. And if you have questions, Adrian at aehelp.com. I will be happy to answer your inquiries. Hello, everyone. Lots of students joining in. I see that. Okay, just a quick FYI. FYI means for your information. Quick FYI. Um, no class tomorrow. So this week, no class on Saturday. Usually there are classes on Saturdays, except this week. Uh, I will be back on Wednesday with speaking part one. This is our next week's schedule. I will post this on Instagram. I will post this on YouTube so you can follow the schedule. You can stay in with the classes and really improve your English. Welcome, Eugene. Happy Panda and Cat as well. All right, everyone. So... Um, yesterday we had speaking part two. Uh, why am I talking about that? Well, because speaking part two and speaking part three are connected. Okay. So you have to make really strong connections between your part two, part three response, and you will get a better band score. All right. All right. Udit, I hope you did this yesterday and I hope your speaking went well. So yesterday we talked about an object that was very important to you, to me, the speaker, okay? So uh, this was the cue card question. Um, does everybody remember what we talked about yesterday for this cue card? So yesterday we got to speaking part two. The examiner said, okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. And we spoke for meh, about two minutes on this. Um, anybody remember what we were talking about yesterday for speaking part two? Uh, Dhruv says, I forgot. Ooh. Um, really, Dhruv? 24 hours later? Uh, Ken Ho Tien Fung says, prescription glasses. Patel agrees. Yeah, VG says, reading glasses. Uh, kind of the same idea, more or less. All right. Um, yeah, very uh, important object, Rashika, the prescription glasses. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's just uh, go over that. They were prescription glasses, the very important object. Good for you to remember that. Uh, this is a speaking class, so let's warm up our speaking by 
going over this. Um, if you have good English, try not to read. Try to just repeat me from hearing my voice. Okay, uh, if you must, then you can read. Uh, this is just a warm up and a reminder of yesterday's response so we can use it for our speaking part three questions, okay? Because speaking part three is connected to speaking part two, the topics, all right? All right, um, so here we go. Three, two, one. The most important object that is vital for my day-to-day -day function are my prescription glasses, which I'm wearing right now. As you can see, the lenses are an oval shape. They have a nice thin gold frame and they are exceptionally lightweight, only 30 grams. So they are very comfortable to wear even for long periods of time. The lenses are also polarizing so that they protect my eyes from UV rays and I don't tire as easily. I got these glasses from my dad on my birthday three years back. He bought them for about $200 from a reputable store called Lawrence Mayo. I really like their look and they go well with my facial features. My glasses are vital because I'm blind as a bat without them. They are 150 to 250 prescription lenses and if I don't have them on, I cannot read my textbooks or especially information on my phone. I need them to watch TV as well as for driving. In fact, Whenever I forget my glasses and I need to read some information, it gives me a headache because I have to really strain my eyes. If I were to lose or misplace my glasses, which has happened to me in the past, firstly, I would search for them high and low and try to find them as I really love them and they would be expensive to replace. However, in the unfortunate circumstance that I cannot find them, I would have to replace them. I would need to get a part-time job so I could afford a new pair. But really, I just hope this doesn't happen. Your two minutes preparation time is up. Please put the note paper to the side. Put your pen pencil down. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you a question or two related to your part two response and some questions connected to this topic. And now the examiner will ask you one or two questions that will be very specific to your part two response. Okay, um, what do you think the uh, examiner might ask you? So while you're giving your part two response, the examiner is actually thinking about what question to ask you. They probably have a couple that are there for them to ask, but if you've already answered these, they'll come up with a question um, that's uh, particular to your answer. So um, what do you think uh, they might ask you? While you're thinking about that, I'll answer Polina Tonku's question. Polina is asking to search for them high and low. What does that mean? Um, to search high and low means to search everywhere. It's a visual idiom, Polina, and it basically means you're searching high, and you're searching low, and you're searching high, and you're searching low. Um, it means you're looking everywhere. It's a very visual idiom. If you imagine somebody high, low, high, low, um, looking at the top shelf, looking underneath the couch, um, you're basically searching high and low, okay? Okay, VG says, how important are your glasses to you? Watch your plurals, VG, Pusala. How important are your glasses to you? Okay. Um, uh, I don't know if they'll ask you that because you've already answered that question in your part two. Okay. All right. So what else? What else might the question be? All right. Um, Jasur, if you have a question about IELTS task one writing, send me an email, okay? Writing Y axis and X axis can be good 
if it's not just for no reason, if you have a good reason, if you have a unique y-axis or a unique x-axis, you can write about that, but that's off topic. So if you have a question other than speaking part three, that's great students, just send me an email. I will definitely answer them, okay? We love helping our students. All right. Yeah, very good, Rashika. So Rashika says, um, one question they might ask you, I know this one came to my mind as soon as I asked what question is, how long have you uh, needed glasses? Okay, or spectacles. Spectacles are another way. So how long have you needed glasses? Okay, Balbir, um, they wouldn't ask you what will you do if you lose, lose these glasses because that's what you just answered, okay? So uh, go ahead and give me uh, a nice answer for this one. So I definitely think this is a very possible question that the examiner might ask you, like how long have you been wearing glasses or how long have you needed to wear prescription glasses, okay? How long have you needed, present perfect, uh, to wear prescription glasses? Okay, definitely a possible question that they will ask you. So, okay. Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. I'm going to do the same and then we'll compare it, okay? So, All right, um, this is my answer. Uh, again, repeat after me, so speak and repeat. Well, I was diagnosed as being nearsighted back in grade three, so I suppose I was around nine or 10 at the time, and I have been wearing glasses ever since. Uh, notice the present perfect progressive. I have been wearing, have you needed, I have been wearing glasses since then or ever since okay all right so Ritesh says I've been wearing prescription glasses for about four years when I was in high school and I was getting constant headaches and I wasn't able to read my books properly okay Ritesh that's good that works Rashika says I have been using prescription glasses since high school um, yeah, and Rashika, you might actually add what you noticed or why you needed them. Okay, my vision was getting a bit blurry and I was having trouble reading um, the teacher's writing on the board, maybe. Okay. All right, so give a little bit of detail. Detail, detail, detail. That's what gets you into the higher band categories, students. Okay. So Un says, I've been using these glasses for over five years since I had lost the last pair while I was swimming in the ocean in the summer of 2007. Um, Nigem Un, it's not how long have you had these particular glasses, but it's how long have you needed to wear glasses, right? So um, maybe you've needed them all your life. So you can say, I've needed glasses ever since I've... I can remember um, I was diagnosed as a baby okay so uh, Reshma says well in my case I needed to wear my um, glasses as long as I've had problems with my eyes actually my uh, lens power has increased since the past so um, it might be a wise idea for me to upgrade my lenses okay Reshma not bad careful with your grammar and careful not to go too far with your response, to go off topic. I mean, talking about needing to improve or adjust your lenses, the question is not really asking you about that. Students always answer the question specifically and in detail. That's very, very important for high band scores, okay? So always strive to answer 
uh, IELTS speaking questions. Specifically, and with detail, okay? That's what you need for high band scores. All right? Okay, so let's practice that now with some more questions. So what I'd like to see and hear, although I can't hear you, I would like to imagine that I can hear you, and I would like to hear some answers plus explanations with numbers, okay, plus examples, okay. So that's what I want to hear in your answers. Then I can give you a high band score for your response. If you give an answer, a clear explanation, numbers help. So if I tell you that I live far from school and then I say it takes about one hour by car, it's over 50 kilometers away, then you have clarity. So numbers really help. And then examples, okay? So lots of explanations, examples, and stay to the point, okay? All right, um, so the topic of part two was an object that's important to you, okay? Now, the examiner will say, okay, I will ask you some questions related to the topic of part two. Now, these questions often are not about you, they're about society in general or humanity or life on earth in general. So you have to kind of speak in the general third person voice, but it's okay to include the odd personal example as long as it's smooth, okay? So let's talk about valuable objects. Certain objects are greatly valued throughout history. Can you think of some? Okay, so... <laughs> I'm sure you can think of Visualize. So visualize your history lessons. Visualize some movies that show past, present. Um, and what are the objects that are valued throughout history? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay. And I see that many students came up with great answers for how long you've been wearing glasses. So Let's see some good answers for this one. Certain objects are greatly valued throughout history. Can you think of some? Okay. I'm going to um, write uh, some answers and then um, you write some answers and we'll see if they kind of match up. Okay. So. All right. Prazal says, well, while well, think about those objects, a great statue placed inside an old temple has come into mind. So religious object, Prazal, if you visualized um, some kind of a statue, like the statue of Buddha, for instance, 
um, then certainly you realize that, okay, wait a second, religious objects uh, symbolizing faith, like the cross for Christians or a statue of Buddha for Buddhists um, have been valued for over centuries, right? Absolutely. So it's good to think of micro, like you think of, oh yeah, that statue in the temple near my home. And then you think of the macro, oh yeah, all of those religious objects that have been valued throughout history. So that is a great way to think of your answers. Very, very good. If you can't think of it right away, buy some time. Hmm, that's a good question. Let me think for a second. Well, if I think about the statue in the temple near my home, religious objects have had great value throughout history, such as a statue of Buddha or a cross. Okay, absolutely. All right, lots of answers coming now. Harpreet Dahidal says, oh yes, there are a number of valuable objects which hold significance in our history, like the ones kept in museums and galleries. These include commodities of different people from the past, um, as well as paintings by famous artists, specifically from the Renaissance. A great example would be the Mona Lisa. Boom, you're picking up mad points for your IELTS speaking there, okay? Angun says, well, I don't know much about historical objects, but I remember in my history class and back in high school, the teacher told me about some prehistoric items that are now being exhibited in museums like fossils from dinosaurs. They are in many galleries around the world. Okay, so again, very nice. So think about that micro or macro and then stretch it, go into detail, okay? Um, precious metals, objects made of gold and silver, right? Lots there for you. So An says, in my mind, inherited items from past generations and ancient objects that contain sentimental and historical relevance remain very valuable. Okay. Un, just one time, please. One time, please, okay? And then give um, examples, Okay. Nick Hill says, historical items which are worth more are paintings of historical figures made by well-known artists, jewelry that has sentimental value for many people like wedding rings. Moreover, religious objects are worth a lot, um, like statues of Buddha or the Catholic cross. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Uh, Depika, jewelry, absolutely. Here's my answer. Uh, take a look and um, repeat after me. So certain objects are greatly valued throughout history. Can you think of some? Well, thinking about my history lessons, there are a few objects that pop into my mind, uh, such as items of nobility, like a crown, or of sentimental value, like a wedding ring, have been treasured by people for centuries. I know that my wedding ring is close to my heart, and so it was too for my parents and grandparents. So that's that smooth flowing personal example. And you can absolutely do that, students. I did that for my speaking exam, and I did quite well, as you'll find out. Um, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday when I reveal my band nine journey IELTS marks. Okay. All right. So good answer, explanation, and example. All right. Okay. And then the examiner will follow up with another question. So their next question might be something like, why are these objects so important for society? So why are objects like a crown or objects of nobility or objects like a wedding ring, um, why are they so important for society? Think about it, use logical, rational thinking, and express yourself clearly. I'm going to answer this question, then you answer this question, and we'll compare, okay? Try to answer without looking at my answer first, okay? All right. Um, Mirzan's asking, can I choose some electric equipment and its transformation throughout history? Yeah, Mirzan, absolutely you can. Um, 
um, electric gadgets are fairly modern day, but I suppose if you talked about, for instance, cars, maybe in the evolution of cars, that could be possible. All right. So why are these objects so important for society? All right, so making connections among your answers. Here's my answer. I'm going to read it, and then let's check what you said, okay? There are definitely thousands of different ways to answer these questions and get a band nine. Most importantly, your answers have to be accurate, detailed, and specific without going off topic. Two to three sentences if you must have a quantified uh, number. So two to three sentences. Here we go. Why are these objects so important for society? Again, speak and repeat. These keepsakes are valued by humanity because they represent a part of culture and they remind people of past events as the crown may be a symbol of a great king who governed the country. Also, the wedding ring signifies a strong commitment and reminds people of a very special day in their lives. Okay, um, let's see what you've come up with. So Reshma says, these objects are much valued by society because they explain for future generations past culture and traditions. Uh, Reshma, you have a really nice idea. You just want to practice your grammar to make sure that it's clear for your listeners. So I made some adjustments practice check that okay the time right now is uh, 27 minutes so i gave you that response at about 26 minutes 30 seconds so when you have some time later this day or later in the week go back to this video check at 26 minutes 30 seconds see how i changed the grammar of your response to be more accurate okay and then work on fixing that and you'll do great all right Viju says, well, it's essential for society to maintain and treasure these items in museums and exhibitions. For instance, our city holds a great museum called Salar Jung Museum, which contains a wide variety of historical objects. Uh, Viju, I don't think you're actually answering the question clearly here. Okay. All right. Uh, Tovis Bao says, well, uh, from my point of view, these objects are valued by humanity as they remind people of the past and some objects have tangible connections to the present. Okay. So Tovis, a uh, little bit more clarity and a little bit less redundancy. In my point of view, I think these objects, you don't need that. So in my point of view, these objects or I think these objects, but don't say in my point of view, I believe, and I think that, okay. It's kind of like, uh, did you just say the same thing three times? Okay. Now I know you're not doing that, that that was extreme. You're only doing it twice, but I have heard students triple up on these kinds of leading expressions. Like, while well, from my perspective and my point of view, I believe that and I'm just like, um, what did you just three times say the same thing? but in different ways, um, you don't get points for that. That's poor communication. In fact, if you keep doing that, you're going to lose points, okay? So clear, concise, detailed information, all right? Keep that in mind. All right. Um, Ritesh says, I think that to get a clear vision 
of how our past was, items like a bullet from World War II can give us an idea of um, the bad times. And that's why uh, these items are treasured to help us remember important events. Yeah, okay, so finish that, Ritesh, a little bit clearer, but you've got a great start. Okay, very good. All right. Okay, let's go to the next question. What steps are important to make sure that valuable objects such as paintings or sculptures are kept safe? Let me do a little adjusting here. So what steps are important to make sure that valuable objects such as paintings or sculptures are kept safe? Okay, so here it's steps, like step one, step two, or people need to do A, B, C. Uh, so again, think about a clear, logical response. Visualize a museum. What do they do to make sure that paintings are kept safe so that generations and generations of people will be able to enjoy them? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Now, in order to pick up more marks, and I saw a question earlier in the chat about this, like, do I need to use um, advanced vocabulary uh, to get a high score in speaking? You definitely have to use a broad range of vocabulary, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to use really fancy words or idioms. Um, what you should do, though, is you should paraphrase. So, um, instead of saying steps, you might say procedures, the procedures that are necessary to ensure, make sure means to ensure that valuable objects, so that objects of significance, okay? So you can paraphrase, use different words than the examiner, which have the same meaning. So synonyms, for instance, okay? All right, I'm going to give a nice answer for this one and then you do the same, all right? So, Okay, so without really going off topic, um, there's uh, my response. Again, speak and repeat. So here we go. What are important, what are, what steps are important to make sure that valuable objects such as paintings or sculptures 
are kept safe. And then here's the response. Here we go. There are definitely some procedures that must be in place to ensure that treasured items are kept from damage and loss. Firstly, they should be housed in a secure location, such as a museum. And they should be kept away from the masses. Masses means from many people. <clears throat> like the Mona Lisa, which is kept behind six inches of bulletproof glass. Finally, people must make sure that these objects are protected from fire and water damage by keeping them in airtight containers. Okay, and again, lots of different possible answers. This is one of them, all right? Um, notice the interesting use of the verb housed. So to house is actually not just a noun, your house, but it's also a verb to keep in an indoor location, okay? All right, uh, let's check out what some of our viewers have written. So uh, Ngaim says, I think those objects need thorough care and reservation from the keepers. People can sometimes clean them. Um, keep them at relevant temperatures in a secure pl place. These methods are necessary, especially for those items that had been damaged from the past, like an ancient bowl from the 15th centuries that was discovered in the ocean. Very good. Yeah, so to keep them from further damage or from further um, degradation. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Angun Mulia says, the most common way I know to store these objects are done by museums around the world is to place them in a glass box. This allows visitors to take a good look while at the same time keeping them safe. Another important factor is making sure that the room temperature is suitable to contain these objects. Very good, Angun. Exactly. So that's the kind of answer the examiner is looking for. As long as you can say that nice and fluent, you're going to get a high band score. Absolutely. Okay. Patel Viral says, I believe that objects like painting statues should be kept in protective cases and timely renovations are necessary to preserve them and regulations should be implemented so people do not tamper with them. Tamper, not temper, tamper with them. Okay. T-A-M. All right. Uh, Dhruv says the best way to keep those important things safe is to put them in a museum having well-established safety requirement and active visitors uh, management team. I'm not sure what you mean by that last part, Dhruv, the active visitors management team. Um, but uh, you mean like a security detail to make sure that visitors don't touch the objects. I guess that's what you mean. Okay. All right, Rashika says the government can impose some rules for visitors to preserve valuable items. In my country, there are rules for visitors to museums um, on the premises, like not touching these items and for certain paintings, not using flash photography. Yeah, okay, good. <clears throat> AJ says they should be properly confined so that no one can steal them easily. And these objects must be monitored by 24-7 closed circuit cameras sometimes lasers are used to protect them from intruders yeah so laser detection system uh, to protect them from burglars absolutely okay uh let's go to the next question by the way i think many of you are doing a fantastic job so big thumbs up for the day um, here we go. So what are some common places where valuable objects are kept and why? So what are common places where valuable objects are kept and why? Now, there's two important points that I have to emphasize here in these classes. When you're doing your official IELTS exam, you will only hear the question once. And you will not see the question. You will only hear the question. So in these live classes, and when you're doing your study, students, remind yourselves and remember to practice answering questions just by listening alone and listening only one time, okay? Sometimes what students do is they practice a lot of uh, speaking for the IELTS with speaking 
questions on paper and with a teacher, but they don't realize that when you get to your actual exam, you're only going to hear the questions. So make sure that you practice in this way. Okay, everyone? And I definitely would love to see some thumbs up there. So tip, uh, keep in mind... that you do not see questions in the IELTS and you only hear them once. Now you can ask uh, to have the question repeated. So you can say, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Would you mind repeating that question? And the uh, examiner will repeat the question maybe once or twice but no more, okay? And they don't have to repeat the question. Sometimes if you just ask for the question to, re to be repeated, the examiner will just go to the next question. They'll just hop, jump over to the next question, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? Angun says noted, good. All right, Angel, Angun, Rashika are like, all right. Okay. Um, so, uh, again, what are some common places where valuable objects are kept and why? Okay, so So, well, aside from museums and galleries, I'm referencing what I said. I think that some valuable objects are kept in a safe or a vault to protect them from uh, loss. As well, they are uh, kept in places which are close to the owner. I mean that I... Uh, keep my glasses on my uh, bedside uh, table so that I know where they are and I can uh, use them uh, quickly or I can find them quickly even in the dark. Okay. So here I'm making a connection to my uh, part two response. Don't forget about part two, okay? Even if you've kind of forgotten a little bit for the first one or two questions, keep in mind that for those high band scores in the speaking, you want to make connections, strong connections among your ideas. And one great way to do that is to link your response in part three to your part two answer. So that's exactly what I'm doing here, okay? So you can repeat after me. What are some common places where valuable objects are kept? Why? Well, aside from museums and galleries, I think that some valuable objects are kept in a safe or vault to protect them from loss, as well as they are kept in places which are close to the owner. I mean, that I keep my glasses on my bedside table so that I know where they are and I can find them quickly even in the dark. Okay, so that's that connection with my part two answer about the glasses. All right. Um, Sister Bakhtarai says, mostly precious items are kept in highly secure places with continuous monitoring, and moreover, location depends on what the item is, such as lockers in a bank help to secure item, clients' items from loss. Very good, Sasir. Very nice. Okay. AJ says, national treasures and objects of historical importance are kept at a museum so that the public can enjoy them and learn their history. Valuable personal objects are kept at bank lockers where people need not worry about their safety as it's insured by the bank. Very nice answer, AJ. Thumbs up. That's fantastic. Okay, very good. Ritesh says, valuable objects are mainly kept in museums and banks, but some items like nuclear weapons are kept 
at secret locations so that they can't be misused and they're kept away from the masses. Okay, Ritesh, that makes sense too. Absolutely, good job. Akshay says, there are many places where we can save valuable items in their original condition, such as museums and galleries, also in a safe or locker. I also keep my glasses in a drawer so I can find them quickly. Uh, very good, Akshay. Yeah, drawers are used um, to keep, keep valuable personal items as well. Definitely. Uh, Jasur says, uh, obviously museums are great places where valuable items can be preserved as these places are protected from thieves um, as well as they're kept in their appropriate conditions and the temperatures. Okay, Jasur, that's one. Uh, whenever you see plurals in a question, Jasur, like places, then definitely say more than one. So if you say museum, that's fine. But say a few more like a bank or in a safe or in a vault or in a secret location. So say at least two, maybe three. When it's plural, don't just say one, okay? The examiner is listening for that, all right? Okay, students, and as long as you're doing a good job answering and you haven't run out of time, the examiners usually give about 12 minutes for each student. Um, or each candidate, they will ask you some more questions and they might even kind of switch up the, um, the topic a little bit. So they might say something like, let's talk about collecting objects. And then they'll ask you a different question, like what are some of the most common types of objects that people like to collect? Okay, so I'll let you think about these questions um, in your own time. There's a few of them here. Uh, you can go back and watch this lesson again uh, later on. It's going to be up on our channel. And then practice with other students. I'll show you where you can practice your speaking. So if you go to our website, gltelp.com, and you create um, a user, you can create a free user by clicking the green button. So if you want to just check it out first, you don't want to pay first, that's totally fine. Uh, you just click the green button, you create a user, and then you log in. Once you create a user, you're going to have a, um, a My Student account, okay? And then you log into your My Student account, and in your My Student account, you're going to find computer-based practice exams, full online course, study plans, lesson videos, and you'll also find this function, the student partner speaking, that's absolutely free. So you click on that. And then um, in the uh, student partner speaking, you're going to find other students. There's always someone in here. Right now it's Anna and Jagjit that are in here. They're looking for somebody to video or audio chat with them, okay? Um, so you can just click on one of these here. Let me... Um, let me just uh, show you this a little bit darker. So there you go. Um, so you can see that there's a video audio and you can send a, a message first. So you can say, hey, would you like to chat for a few minutes? And then they'll say, sure. And then you can say, would you like to do audio or video and audio? And then you do that and uh, you can use the questions from this class, practice them, practice your speaking, okay? All right, everyone. So make use of that. Um, I am gone for a few days, but I will be back on Wednesday with speaking part one on the uh, 15th. Okay. And uh, make sure to study until then. Use the websites. And I will bid you a fantastic weekend. Keep positive, keep strong. Remember, you're all beautiful people. Don't let anybody ever try to convince you otherwise. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. Much love to all of you, wherever you are in this amazing world. Bye for now. See you on Wednesday.